Grace and peace to you from God. I pray you're all doing well. I want to talk a little bit today about free will. Uh, I think it's an important topic. I think it's important for many reasons. One of those reasons is because uh, the more we understand who we are, um, the better we can understand who God is. And vice versa, the more we understand who God is, the better we can understand who we are, why things are happening the way they're happening. And um, it just puts a whole lot of things in perspective. And even more importantly, I think it should uh, drive us to our knees all the more because uh, it should make us more grateful for uh, the gifts that we have been given and number one of those gifts being our faith. Um, so today, this may be a series, but I want to start this um, this one off with reading out of Genesis 20, um, where there's an instance where Abraham has gone into another land and, you know, en route to the land God has promised him. And he's coming upon some peoples and rather than tell them that this is his wife, you know, she's a beautiful woman. He's afraid that they may, you know, take her and kill him. So he lies and says, this is my sister. So I believe this is the second time he's done this. Um, and so he does it. He tells them, this is my sister. And so Abimelech takes the, the king of Gerar. He takes Sarah. It's like, all right, well, that's your sister. Then, you know, I'm sure you don't mind me. Yeah, yeah. So he takes her. And then Abimelech goes to sleep in a dream that night. And God appears to him. Genesis chapter 20 and at verse 3. But God came to, to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Verse 4, now Abimelech had not approached her, so he had not done anything, he had not tried anything with Sarah yet. So he says to the Lord, Lord, will you kill an innocent people? Did he not himself say to me, she is my sister? And she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this, Lord. So he's like, Lord, he told me with his words that that was his sister. And didn't she say with her own mouth, this is my brother? So if there's both saying this and I've taken her, you know, out of my own integrity, I, I took her um, with, you know, intentions of making her my wife or one of my wives or just taking this woman. I don't know what his intentions were. Okay, then still in Genesis chapter 20 and at verse 6. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart. And it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Verse six of chapter 20 in the book of Genesis. God continues with in verse seven. Now then return the man's wife for he is a prophet so that he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Now, what does Abimelech say back in verse 4? Or no, he doesn't say that. He's, it says, now Abimelech had not approached her. So he doesn't do anything. He doesn't make any advances. He doesn't try anything with her yet, right? Why does that happen? Well, God tells us why that happens in verse 6. I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart, and it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Oh, it's a wonderful verse, a key verse that tells us about the sovereignty of, of God and his providence. And on another level, our free will in the sense of it cannot contradict his plan and his will. So we do have certain abilities. We, we are free in a sense, but we don't have full autonomy to go and to do and to say as we please because there is one who has the supreme authority, the supreme sovereignty that if he lets you go on sinning, you're in trouble. 
If he keeps you from sinning, you're receiving his grace and you are being stopped from that which you are seeking to do in order to, for God's will to continue. This is his plan, his story. And ultimately, it's about God's will and not man's. And these verses are key to understand because you have so many arguments out here about, oh, you know, God, you know, man changed God's word in the Bible. Well, you're telling me God can't control his creation? He can communicate his word to man and then just let them change the Bible, change his word, his perfect word. You know what I mean? Just so many examples of how we can go to scripture and say, no, God is sovereign over his creation. He controls everything that happens and everything that doesn't happen. And he says it even in Isaiah, good and evil, I have the final say so for whether it takes place on my planet. All right. So just wanted to share that with you, give you some food for thought. I'm going to get out of here, try to keep these short, but pungent and to the point. All right. May God's saving grace and peace be upon you.